The following podcast may contain adult language and an abundance of law. So get ready, nerds, because we're talking Carl Urban's dread. Excellent. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Salty Nerd Podcast. <laughs> Today we're talking. You showed your face, man. Sorry, oh my bad. <laughs> Don't take the helmet off. I gotta leave this on the whole fucking no. time. <laughs> anyway, what's up, everybody? We're talking Carl Urban's Dread movie, one of the best comic book movies ever freaking made. I'm gonna stand on my flag right here. Mountain of Dicks. Mountain of Dicks, best comic book movie ever made. Gave away the ending of the podcast. Anyway, I'm joined as always by my fantastic panel of nerds. That was Dread. <laughs> Adios. See you later, everybody. Vader's here. Hi. Half sober? I don't, dude. I'm just, I'm feeling weird. Okay, I'm, I should be blasted, and I kind of am. On blueberry I'm, wine, but no at less. the same time, Jude gave me some weird like. It made you invincible. Stuff. <laughs> I feel like, kind of invincible. Feel like, <laughs> what is it? Silver something? Silver whatever? Yeah. You know what it is? It's slow mo. Oh, slow mo. And I'm going. Yes. <laughs> Everything's beautiful and like high def. <laughs> For the audio people only, he's drinking his wine in slow motion. Yeah, that was really good. That's great. <laughs> Jude's also here. Hello! <laughs> I am not on slow mo. Oh, shit. I should have done the slow mo intro. Uh, Kadish is also here. Welcome, sir. Yeah, so this is another interesting movie. You know how uh, I told you guys about uh, the behind the scenes turmoil of the first Judge Dredd movie in 1995 with mm. Sylvester Stallone and all that stuff. Well, this movie carried on that tradition. So I've got a lot of fun, kind of fun facts cool. to talk about Sweet. with this. But right. uh, this is the superior Dredd movie, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. And I can't wait to talk I about it. I think that's, I think everybody feels that way. It is the superior Dredd movie. I've never met somebody who doesn't really like this movie. <laughs> Like everybody I talk to, oh, you've seen Carl Urban's Dread? All oh, that movie's fucking badass. Like, yeah. You want to talk about those numbers? I sure do. In a minute, we're going to be right back. And uh, I'm going to polish off my blueberry wine. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Don't make that face like you don't like it. You know you liked it. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, before we get into Dread, I want to let you know that you guys can support us by going to saltynerdstore.com and grabbing some awesome merch. We've got hats in the works and hoodies in the works and t-shirts galore. So head over there and type in salty in the promo code area to get 10% off of your purchase. Let us know. Yeah, there's a wall behind Vader right there with all of our designs on it. Um, <laughs> Dila, the showcase girl. So head over there, 10% off for Salty and uh, help support us. Send us a photo if you buy something. Let us know... Uh, that you did so share it i'm drunk i'm sorry we're gonna just go on dread take it away jude oh, all right sir <laughs> 2012 dread rated r with a runtime of one hour 35 minutes this had a budget of 45 million dollars nice what do you think this brought into the box office 48 okay i just want to point out that the budget of this was like half of the budget of the last one from yeah, 95. they did so much more with it they did vader what do you think this brought in, into the uh, box What'd you say? I'm gonna. I'm, I, I'm, I just. I made a sarcastic remark. I'm gonna say 50, 55 million. Yeah. Okay. Budget of forty five million dollars. This brought in forty one million dollars yeah. to the box. Yeah, you Zip people does not nonsense. make its budget back. Oh, That's nonsense. Makes me so mad. This is the far superior. It's a fucking great movie. It's, it's not only a great <laughs> comic movie. It's a great sci fi movie. It's mm -hmm. a great dystopian movie. So it's a great cop movie. Th there's actually a reason why it. it kind of underperformed and a big reason of that was that um so like this was originally released in 3d uh -huh. in fact on the posters it says dread 3d yeah. mm -hmm. and all the slow-mo scenes were like filmed in like 3d and and, and or converted to 3d in post but uh, at the time like it was like this big 3d fad going mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. in theaters because they could charge more money per ticket for was it, it. 2012 or something like that 2012. Yeah. Yeah. so it was after avatar and everybody was like 3d is the yeah. newest thing yeah. yeah the the 3d craze was sweeping it and so like <laughs> they basically went all in with the, the 3d and they were like oh you can't watch this in like a regular theater and audiences are like, I don't like 3D, so I'm not going to wa wait till video for this to come out. And so, like, that affected the box office uh, in a big way. So unfortunate. Yeah. And I also think that there was a severe lack of marketing uh, mm. for this movie as well. And ironically, there was another movie that had just come out called uh, The Raid yes. Redemption, mm -hmm. which is one of the best action movies of all time. And it follows a very similar plot 
and that had come out before this. And so people were like, oh, this is just a rip off of the raid. Well, let me tell you what it's about before you start getting too deep into it. All right, go ahead, Jude. When a bunch of cunts are found (laughs) murdered in the atrium of a 200 story building, Carl Urban takes his psychic rookie to get to the bottom of the mystery and ends up getting trapped inside by drug kingpin Cersei Lannister. The two judges have a million dollar price tag on their heads and Lannisters always pay their debts. If the residents of the locked down tower don't kill Billy Butcher and his sidekick, not Starlight, then they can spend the rest of their lives behind the sealed citadel walls with him. Dread and not Starlight make their way through the catacombs of the building, using murder and mind reading to stay alive, dragging a homicidal hostage along with them. Making their way to the Red Keep for their showdown with the Queen Mother, they take out the dirty judges that Circe hired, and when she threatens to pull another wildfire incident, Butcher calls her bluff and Puff Puff passes her out the window of the Sept, because when you play the game of judgment, you win or you die. Discuss. All right. The movie's fucking great. (laughs) Carl Urban's frown, 100%. I mean, that is a million-dollar scowl. Fuck you. Yeah. I am the law. Like, it's just so good. And I I, got to say that Carl Urban is in the uh, halls of of history in moviedom for being the one actor with the balls to commit to Mm -hmm. never take off. Yes. Yes. And all all the stuff that's come out recently where, like, you know, you have Bane with, like, the mask. You have Mm -hmm. uh, the Mandalorian and and, uh, Halo and all that stuff. They always take off the helmet. They always bitch out. Because they got to show the actor's face. Yeah, but but Carl Urban was like, no, No. this is the character. And what I love about that is even after this movie came out and people keep asking him, are you going to do another, are you going to do another Dread, another Dread? Are you going to take your helmet off? And he says, yes. Never taking my helmet off. I, I respect the shit out of he that. Shouldn't do it's it. fucking amazing. Okay, he's so he's not a cunt. Exactly, he's not a cunt. I love that. <laughs> I love that word. <laughs> so a cunt. A cunt. I love, I love how it's, it's, it's making a. It's making inroads into the the language. Cunt. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a great word. Yeah, Rogan uses it all the time. It needs it's to wild. be used. It's wild, man. It's wild. It's wild. <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> Fucking says that shit all the time. Um, wild. It's wild and cunt. Those yeah. Are, that's that's Joe Rogan's contribution to cunt. Society. <laughs> don't, no, 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 no. You, you don't get to give cunt to Joe Rogan. No, that's just, not his word. I just figured out my roller derby. derby name. <laughs> wild. wild cunt coming <laughs> around the corner. <laughs> 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 We're, <laughs> we're so dumb. I'm gonna give you some roller skates. We're, all we're, right. we're in hour four. Yeah. And we're like blasted into it. Uh, all right. Okay. So I want to just start out by saying immediately, the second this movie starts with Carl Urban's like narration Amazing. over like Mega City One, 80, 800 million people living in a town. Like, yeah. it's just like that whole thing. Yes. You know what's weird? Huh. Um, this is the future I see. Huh? Legit. Yeah, I, I see this happening. We're in it. We live in Vegas, dude. Yeah, it's fucking this, scorched earth it's, around it's us. It's like we can't go out. We can't go out cursed any farther. Earth. Sorry, cursed earth. We can't go out any farther. So we're just gonna start building mega blocks. Yeah, in the center of the town, and we're gonna go out from there. Yeah. So yeah, hundred percent sure. Uh, and then immediately the the what sets this movie apart. I think it, it made a hard stance right away that this movie was not gonna be friendly. No, and it's like that chase scene. And his motorcycle. If you compare his motorcycle to the fucking shit mobile the, that, the, that the Stallone was driving, yeah. like this motorcycle looks like something I would want to see on the road. Uh-huh. Like that thing's badass. Yeah, they're they're called Lawmasters, yeah. and they were specially built for this movie. Mm-hmm. And Carl Urban refused to let stuntmen drive it. Fuck yeah, Every time dude. you see Dread on the motorcycle, that's actually Carl Urban. Yeah, like, yes. Get off my bike, you cunt. Bro, we know somebody who knows somebody who knows Carl Urban. We need to get <laughs> Carl Urban on the show. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that chase scene immediately sets the tone for this movie. And it introduces this drug called slow-mo, which I'm like... Slow-mo. Th- okay, I, I'm, I was trying to save this, but I'm just going to fucking say it. <clears throat> this is the number one best use of slow motion in a movie ever. ever. Bar none. Ever. Put the flag in the mountain. Done. Yes. Dread. Agreed. Takes it. Like, like fuck 300. Disagree. Fuck all the Zack Snyder bullshit yeah. movies. Mission Impossible. Wh- no. What? Get the fuck out of here. The second one? <laughs> yeah. Fuck no. out of here. Go dancing. Oh, You're high. The pigeons. 
John Woo's like, excuse me. <laughs> Let me edge in on here. Yeah. No, this to me, okay, I'll just but I'll preface it with that. To me, this is the best slow motion ever used in film. I really like the introduction of it too, with her yeah. in the bathtub. Yeah, all that too, with yeah. like she's raising her hand and uh-huh. she got the, the water and stuff like that. But the guys in the chase scene, like this chase scene sets the tone so well for this movie. It, it introduces slow-mo, it introduces dread as like this hardcore, like they just took out an innocent, taking him down. Like mm-hmm. he's a hardcore lawman. And they like make it very clear that he is a good guy. Yes. And that's another thing. You can really root for this dread because yes. he doesn't, he's not completely black and white. He allows some leniency when it's needed throughout the movie. And I really appreciated that. But when there's a hardcore criminal on the line, mm-hmm. he's like, there is no you're not getting out of this. Yeah, mm-hmm. this dread gives warnings like to the homeless guy. He's, mm-hmm. he's like, when I come back, you better not be here. Yeah. And when he does come back and the guy hasn't moved, he's like, okay, now I'm taking you in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he and he makes like very clear rules for his rookie that he's taking out. And he's like, if you do this, it's a fail. If you do yep. this, it's a fail. But he's giving her the leeway to make her own like judgments. Yeah, for sure. And another thing that this opening chase scene sets up is the brutality of this movie. Like going, like the whole world's brutal. The yeah. whole world's brutal. But when when that dude is walking across the road he's and just, he gets smashed and he's just like a bug splat on the window, <laughs> mm-hmm. th- they were like, "This is gonna be a dark movie, guys. Yep. Buckle up." And I, I just I love how well the first like ten minutes of this movie sets everything up, and mm-hmm. it was just and also, and also you talked case. about slow mo and. and it, it's an in-movie um, kind of like feature that slow motion happens because of this drug. Mm-hmm. And they go dark with it. Like oh, they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll they'll make someone take the slow-mo drug and then throw them over like the, 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 balcony. the balcony. Yeah. And so like as they're falling to their deaths, they have all the time in the world to realize what's happening. Yeah, because they're in slow motion. So mm-hmm. it feels like that's happening forever. <laughs> yeah. That would not be good. And that's a great setup for yeah. what happens at the very, very end of this yeah. movie yep. with oh, Cersei yeah. Lannister. I don't get the ending. How so? Um, was she just bluffing? Are we all, do we want to get to the very, very what? end already? Well, well, I'm just putting it out there that okay. I don't get it and I need it explained. Yeah, right. well, we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll talk about it in a minute. Okay. But um, do you guys know the name Alex Garland by any chance? It sounds really familiar. Alex Garland is, is the screenwriter of this movie. And he actually started um, working on it in 2006, um, just because his friends were the guys who were like producing this movie. Mm-hmm. And Alex Garland, he um, he was kind of Danny Boyle's like like go to movie producer writer friend. So like he was the one who did Sunshine um, and uh, Twenty Eight Days Later and a bunch of other stuff. And okay. he's gone on to become a director in his own right. Okay, where he did like um, um, Ex Machina, which was oh yeah yeah. Um, uh, like a big science fiction movie, but he, but I find him very pretentious. Like like a lot of his stuff, I find very pretentious because he direct, he uh, produced this TV show for FX called Devs, which I thought was oh was god, really, I hated Devs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like a lot of his stuff is is, is very pretentious in my opinion, um, especially that movie Annihilation. Um, but, okay, yeah, you remember? I remember you saying you know, I hated that movie. Yeah, but but he he worked on like four different drafts of this movie and eventually he settled on, you know what, I'm just gonna make this a day in the life of Judge Dredd yeah. mm-hmm. as opposed to making it like a big sweeping, like, you know, like epic movie. Yeah. Kind of like how Stallone wanted it to be. And the credited director of this movie is named Pete Travis. And he hasn't really done a whole lot, but um, one of the weird things about this movie is that because of Alex Garland's association with it, he was on set the entire shoot, right? And apparently Pete Travis is one of these guys where he's more concerned about getting the shot than he is about anything else. Mm -hmm. And so it fell to Alex Garland to basically work with the actors and um, the production and stuff like that. And Carl Urban's been on record as saying like, you know, Alex Garland actually directed this movie because whenever he had an issue with the script or he had a question about his performance, he would go to Alex as opposed to Pete, who is actually the credited director on this. Mm. And when they finished shooting and got into the editing of this movie, basically the studio did not like what Pete Travis was doing. So they kicked him out of the editing room and Alex Garland had to come in and basically create this, the, the movie and, and the editing. And so there was actually like um, a brief legal dust up where they were saying like, oh, he should legally get a co-directing credit for this movie because he did so much. But Alex Garland was like, no, 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 let Pete have the directing credit. I'll just take the writing credit. But everyone it was kind of like a Spielberg and Poltergeist situation where like Alex Garland stealth directed this movie. And so this is actually an Alex Garland movie uh, more mm. than anything else. 
Good for him. It's a fucking great movie. Why do you think it didn't make money at the box? Well, um, like I said before, like it was th 3D and a lot of people were kind of rejecting 3D at this point. But uh, a big thing is like it, it didn't come out at uh, like a, a good time. Uh, it was like a September release. Hmm. Um, also, like people um, thought of like the Stallone Judge Dredd. And so they were kind of like, yeah. ah, I don't know about this movie. But the, yeah. but the I think the biggest thing was the fact that the Raid Redemption came out before this. And that was like a big sleeper hit because it was a foreign film. But like people just like went gaga over it. And the actual plot of this movie is pretty much what happens in, in that movie. Yeah. And so people were like, oh, this is just like a derivative ripoff. And I remember going and seeing this in the theater and not really appreciating it because like I had just seen The Raid and I was like, yeah, this was an okay movie, but it, it, it was just okay. But over time, the more you watch this movie, the better it gets. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> uh, So the next thing I want to talk about is the other character in the movie that is starring with Carl Urban, uh, Dr Judge Anderson or Rookie Anderson, whatever. Oh, yeah. I mean, she's not quite a judge yet. Um, first off, I just want to say she's freaking gorgeous in this movie. Beautiful, beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. But her character is really fucking cool and interesting. I have so, a question about that. Yeah, what's up? Is that in the comic books or like the, the mutants? The mutants? Yeah. I don't know. I, I believe so. I, be I want to say yes, but I don't okay. know. There are, there are mutants I was just curious because that wasn't in the Stallone one at all. Mm -hmm. Well, so, they talked about mutants, but they were portrayed as like these weird cannibals yeah. and like shit like that. Yeah, they weren't so cool I, psychics. Well, well, yeah. well, they even say in this thing that mutants tend to be like deformed and, and like weird and right. like she yeah. kind of lucked out because mm -hmm. like like she looks normal yeah the, the one dude was like talking to her he's like yeah. usually mutants have Avon like three Barksdale from the wire <laughs> yeah usually <laughs> mutants have like three stubby arms you look like you got put together pretty well like, mm -hmm. he did make that comment that she's like one of the lucky ones mm -hmm. um, but I love her character she's so cool and the she's growth she's got that superpower that you want Yes. Yeah, I get to read minds and fuck with people, which they, she uses incredibly about halfway through this movie. It's just like the the weird mind game that she plays with this one guy. Um, but I just wanted to say, like, her growth as a character, I think, is one of the best, like, setup and payoffs that we've seen in a long time in a movie. We talk about this all the time. Like, setup and payoff matters. We need to have setup and payoff. Like, they set up early on. Uh, There's a line where he's like, are you ready, rookie? And she's like, Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. He's like, you don't look ready. And then like later on in the movie when shit starts to really happen and she's finally just fed up with it. She's he's like, like, let's just go kill yeah. these fuckers. And she, he's like, are you ready, rookie? And she's like, yeah, let's fucking go. And he's like, you look ready. Like, <laughs> I just, it was so freaking perfect. Like that setup and payoff was amazing. Yeah. Her she's, character like, she's was She's like, so I cool. didn't even care. I've yeah. already failed. Yeah. Let's just get this over let's with. Let's just finish let's this just fucking fight. Let's just do it, yeah. I, I, yeah. I loved her character setup. Yeah, she said, I, I failed because of this and this mm -hmm. and this. And it's like, let's just do this and get it over. Yeah. It was a great moment. Um, but every, I, I'm just going to dump all of my love on this movie because I fucking love every bit of it. I love the setup. I love the brutality. Cersei Lannister, Lena Haiti as Mama. Fuck. Oh, she looks um, rough, too. She really embraced this character. Badass bad yeah. guy. I loved it. And uh, the well, way she's, she's got that look about her. Yeah, like, she does. She's got that 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 the way she, she snurls her lip mm -hmm. up. Every character she's ever played has that same kind of. She's gonna fuck you up. <laughs> fuck you attitude. Yeah, you, you know it doesn't matter if it's her, Cersei Lannister, or. Or what else was she in? Um, she was a god about her milkshake. Do you remember that shit? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, got, it got mentioned in the chat. Um, fuck, who was she? she oh, was, she was uh, Leonidas's wife yeah. in 300. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And she was, she was same... Same she, attitude. Same attitude. Same badassery. Like, yeah. yeah. yeah that, she that's just, a, that's she a, has an aura about her. Yeah. Of, yeah. She's just a tough but hot and, and, lady. And the story to this movie is very straightforward. Basically they, they go in to investigate these three deaths that mama ordered executions for. They f find like a drug den where they break mm -hmm. in and they arrest Wood Harris's character, uh, Avon Barksdale from the wire. And, um, instead of killing him, um, they're basically going to take him in for questioning. And he, he happens to be high enough in the clan, the mama clan that he knows like all the secrets. And so mama, rather than, um, just like letting it go, locks down the entire mega structure mm -hmm. so like they they can't leave and puts like a bounty on the judges heads and so everyone in this mega structure it's like three million people or something like that something ridiculous yeah. it's like a city's worth of people yeah. in one building yeah they, they basically it becomes a warrior situation where like everyone is against like the judges now and they have to like survive and i like the idea that this is just another day in the life of judge dread yeah <laughs> like, like oh, this yeah. stuff happens all he the time he doesn't bat an eye he's like oh well that sucks all right <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna take a little longer to get out of here. Oh, and I love the guns in this too. Yeah, well, I mean, they, that was from something from 
it's from the comics, but like yeah. Stallone's movie did it too. But he's like grenades, and he like yeah. you know, do, 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 and he shoots the grenades. This one, yeah, this one like <laughs> they play with a a lot more. Yeah, and he uses it in such freaking awesome ways, and it's so much fun. He's like high X, yeah, double yeah. barrel. I, yeah. And I love the whole like oh I'm like I'm out of ammo, but yes. just of this kind. So he's like going through the roster of the different kinds of ammo he right? might have to try and find something yeah. to kill these guys with. I think like structurally too, this movie is so freaking perfect because you open up, you got the the first act which sets up the world, sets up the scenario that yeah. they're gonna be in. The second act, we get like this hard downturn for our characters. Anderson gets captured, mm -hmm. Dredd gets fucked up by the, the judges that come in and betray him. You know, mm -hmm. Mama hires these judges for a million credits each or a million credits split between four yeah. of them to come in and kill Dredd for her. And like, it doesn't work because Dredd's a fucking badass. But like, the second act, everything just goes straight to hell. And then right at the end of the second act, you see him. He's like, I'm going to reload all my shit off these dead judges. Reloads it. Anderson's back on top. She's like, let's just fucking get this over with. And like, you go into She's that third. mind booby trapping people. Yeah, you go into the third act and just, they're a freaking full bore. Let's just finish this job. I just, I love the way this film is structured. I love the action. I love the slow-mo. I fucking love this movie. Man. I, I, it's awesome. I, I agree. I, uh, this is one of those movies that you don't have any questions going through the movie mm -hmm. because they tell you all the answers as you're going through. You don't have to wonder about yeah. why people are doing what and what motivates who for what reason mm -hmm. it, it's, it's all right there. And I, and I love that it's, it's, it's structured very well. It's a simple movie, yeah. which, which makes me want to uh, call up Jude's question about the ending of the movie. Okay. Oh yeah. Speaking of you had a question about, was it mama or with her explosive or something? So are, are we, yeah, we ready? Can, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so the end of the movie comes and mm. she's got an explosive rigged from her wrist linked to her heart and mm -hmm. if her heart stops then um it blows up yeah. the building it's a typical dead man switch so yeah. ba basically yeah. she's always known that there would come a time where people would come for her so she's rigged the building with explosives and she has this thing that's attached to her pulse right that uh once her heart stops like the entire building and all the millions of people in it will die so and, and, yeah and 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 so like basically she she's using this as like a shield against dread where he's like you know if, if you kill me you kill yourself and everyone in this building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then Dredd makes her smoke the slow mo and mm -hmm. he chucks her out the window. Right. Well, but he also explains to her that um, I'm going to throw you off the top floor of this building and probably the signal from your uh, your dead man switch isn't, isn't going to isn't going to go through all the concrete. But and that steel. was a probably. Yeah. That's he, my question. Exactly. Was he, he just did, calling her bluff? He, 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 he called her gamble. bluff and he took a gamble. Yeah. 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 It was okay. a gamble for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically, like he, he even tells her before he, he does this where where he says that, okay, um, it's been set up earlier on that their their own communications, which are a lot stronger than uh -huh. that, that signal couldn't get out of the building. Controlled, you copy. My comms are down too. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, you know, uh, 200 levels of pure concrete. Pure concrete. You think, yeah, you gotta do uh, yeah, the frown. Yeah, you yeah, think yeah. you can get through the 100 layers of concrete. Yeah, and, 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 and so like when he when he throws her off and, and like she lands at the bottom, he, st he stands there for a minute and he's just like, yeah, I thought so. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like nothing blows up. And, and so like it was a calculated risk. Mm -hmm. But uh, Dredd is one of those guys where like he just, like he's a fast thinker and he knows his stuff. And so he was like, I'm willing to bet that if I chuck her down there instead of like shooting her, that the signal isn't going to be powerful enough to hit what it needs to hit. Mm -hmm. and, and so like, I'm, I'm, I'm pissed off at this lady and yeah. I, I want to, I'm going to end, I'm gonna end this right now. Yeah. yeah. I love that scene too, where she's like, you know, you don't have a choice. Dread. This is a negotiation. He's like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> I love that whole scene. Um, I just, I'm, I've been trying, as we've been talking about it, I've been trying to think about like, what's my, because I love this movie from top to bottom. There's nothing I don't yeah. like about it. There's I have one I have more question. No salt in the margarita for this. Go ahead, Jude. I don't understand why they have to skin those people before they throw them into the atrium. Because they're just, they're assholes. Just a little and they extra. Like to, they okay. like to torture people. Just to go extra. Just extra. Send a message. Just to send a message. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's like, this yeah. is, this is, peach trees is mine. And you mm -hmm. do what I tell you. And okay. You so like I, it, I, off. I wasn't sure if it was like a, like an identification thing to make it hard to identify them, but no. it didn't really. No. It's just sending a message. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mama is just known for her brutality. Okay. And so like, yeah. like they'll often, this is a cartel thing too, where yeah. like they'll, 
they'll kill people in very brutal ways and then display the bodies mm -hmm. as like a warning to other people not to like, you know, mm -hmm. make the mistake these guys do. I, I was, I was going to say it's very much a cartel thing. Yeah. yeah it's okay. same right up yeah, there. For yeah. sure. Um, so I, I'm, tr I've been trying to think of like what my favorite scene was and there's so many freaking awesome scenes. I can't really pick just one but i do want to mention um something that the stallone movie like kind of failed to do that i felt like this movie did really well was kind of humanize the world that they lived in oh they brutalized it i mean it, it's, made, it's, it made this a complete yeah this is dystopian a nightmare world brutal world but what yeah. i liked is and it's a very small moment but i think it tells a lot is like when after the minigun scene when she's shooting up the whole floor yeah and there's a lot of innocent people who don't want anything to do with this they're mm -hmm. not drug members they're, no, they're, they're you know people. they're not they're just normal people and uh and dread blows a hole out the side and jumps out and he's with those kids that are like on the half pipe with the skateboarding mm -hmm. thing to me that kind of shows that like there's just normal people out there yeah, yeah. and yeah. this is something that anderson said first and the off hospital guy too yeah the hospital well he's kind of a dick but like the hospital guy like threw them under the bus like i'm not gonna help you it's gonna get me killed and then he just gets fucking shot later yeah. anyway he was, like, protecting the people in the hospital <laughs> <laughs> was he though yeah because he was like if i let you in here they're gonna come yeah. in here too and all of these people that i'm in charge of taking care of are gonna die well and mama said like, right, you're on your own she said right before that in the in the, when she addressed the entire building she mm -hmm. says um i want these people and i want them dead and if i find you harboring helping or them, helping them gonna i'm gonna die. kill you and, and your next your generation yeah 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 it's so I was like, brutal dude. yeah yeah and one of the interesting things about this movie that this the Stallone version did not have at all is there are these little moments that kind of like show the consequences of the, the judge's actions. Uh -huh. Like for instance, uh, the rookie passes judgment on this one guy who survived, you know, you know a, a showdown. And so like, uh, she kills him. Mm. And then later on she meets his wife. Yeah. With who, the baby. Who yeah, doesn't yeah. know that he's dead yet. Yeah. yeah. And, and the only reason that, that, that she's helping them is because she doesn't want her husband killed. And the minute that the rookie realizes, Oh, that's the guy I just, you know, yeah, shot, shot in the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and you can see the remorse and, and, and it's little things like that because judge dread never has any remorse over like what he does. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but like the, this rookie one, uh, um, judge does and there's a great another great scene here where basically there are these two kids that find them mm -hmm. and judge dread um chooses to stun them as yeah. opposed to actually kill them which i thought was interesting but but it also leads to um like his decision to do that leads to the rookie getting kidnapped mm -hmm. and, and so like it's just interesting to see like the cause and effects throughout the this the show yeah that's, that's that's the kind of stuff that humanizes dread a little bit a little I, bit yeah I, I much more that. than stallone it's like listen you kids you dumbasses yeah it's like he's like uh, I, sh I, sh I should smoke you right now what does he say a year in the juvie cube cubes or a body <laughs> bag makes no difference to me like it's just it's good shit man like this this movie plays so well with characters and anderson's growth like you just mentioned that that crazy dark scene where he, she like okay i have to pass judgment on this guy she shoots him in the head and then later on finds his family with a baby and she's oh, like yeah. oh my fucking god when earlier when she walked in like there's people just like me that live in this building and i'm just trying to make a difference and like as yeah. the movie progresses she's like fuck i can't make a difference this is wild mm -hmm. but the moral yeah, of the story he say in the beginning like we we have like a six percent effect yeah yeah it's very low but mm -hmm. i mean they're they're there for whatever they can do mm -hmm. uh, but it's just it's just a really great way of like kind of um, exploring this character's yeah. motivation. And, and also it, it's the typical cop thing where like the chief justice teams up dread to evaluate whether or not this, you know, mutant mm -hmm. can become a, a judge. And throughout the entire movie, he's kind of like judging her, like, like testing her and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And at first, like he just doesn't want anything to do with her because he hates mutants and he doesn't want to babysit people and stuff like that. And by the end of the movie, there's this, the scene where like, you know, like she's walking off to get medical attention and the chief justice shows up and she's like, uh, so how'd she do pass or fail? And he's just, and even though like she did stuff that would require immediate failure, he's just like pass. pass. <laughs> yeah. So, so like there's, there, 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 it's interesting to see like the character growth there because mm -hmm. judge dread like you know he does have a moral center and, and it shows that where it's like okay she earned her stripes on this one yeah um but at the same time like he's also the the i am the law yeah. type guy I, too. oh that was a that was a great moment and he did it so much better than stallone i'm sorry he just he does it so like so the scene is like he finally he gets a hold of like the intercom system for the building and he's like mama is not the law i am the law 
<laughs> it's just it was so like deadpan. I yeah. feel like Stallone was playing it like a caricature oh, yeah. of a comic book character. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and Urban Carl was taking Urban it seriously. was just playing a character. Yeah, I loved it. It was awesome. So yeah, Carl Urban's just a, so much of a better actor. Oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so and, I'm just and, gonna... and he's a geek. He gets it. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like any f- other actor would have taken his helmet off, and he didn't. I love that. That endears me so much. Yeah, and, and in fact, see. he was really kind of uh, method on this, where like yeah. he was always in character. Really? And, and, and there would be people on set who would crack jokes, and he'd just like stare at them with that <laughs> frown. And, uh, and and they'd be like, okay, so, sorry, Carl. <laughs> Not trying to make you laugh. <laughs> I wonder if like uh, Henry Cavill would be a good Judge Dredd. No. You don't think so? No. He's, he's, too, he's, he's, he's too likable. He's a geek. <laughs> <laughs> put, you, put the, you put the helmet on and... I mean, I could see him like maybe I don't. I don't know. I'd love to see another movie with this well, uh, character. Yeah. Carl Urban based his performance on Clint Eastwood. Who, of course, he I, I can see that. J- yeah. Judge Dredd For comic sure. book fans have always felt like he was based off of Clint Eastwood, mm-hmm. but actually, the the comic book artist, the guys who created Judge Dredd, based him off of. Um, uh, he, so like, uh, you know how we've uh, reviewed the movie Death Race 2000? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So David Carradine's character in that, Frankenstein, oh. Frankenstein oh. What, what was, was the basis for... Gimp the, Vader? To, Gimp Vader, yeah. Oh, no. Uh, um, Scorpius? But, uh, but, and, and it's funny because Sylvester Stallone was in that movie. Mm-hmm. So, oh, wow. That's freaking crazy. Yeah, but, but that was the impetus for the character look and feel was like the Frankenstein character in Death Race 2000. Okay. Huh. I didn't see that. I still don't see it. You guys... Uh, I'm going to reject that. <laughs> I reject your reality and substitute my own. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to just say, I've been trying to like to talk about like, or find my favorite moment in this movie. And like I said, I just, I love every second of this movie. It's so freaking good. But I think the one moment that really stands out to me in my head is right after the minigun attack. Judge Dredd grabs one of Mama's dudes, just walks out of the smoke, fucking throws him over the <laughs> edge, and then turns around. Doesn't look at her, doesn't yeah. do shit, just turns around and walks back into the smoke. That was just a freaking... And, and she's just standing there like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> like, I love that moment. Yeah, and then when the other judges come in, and they're like, do you know who this guy is? Yeah. And she's like, no. And they're like, we, we do. do. Yeah, it's fucking it's dread. It's cost you a million. <laughs> and, I love it. And there's a great scene there where he's like fighting the turncoat judge, Lex. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Lex uses an armor piercing. Lex. Yeah, Lex uses an armor piercing round to shoot through a, a brick wall through the judge's arm or through judge dread's armor and out like the front of it. Mm-hmm. And he kind of slides down and he's like really badly wounded. And Lex comes up and he's about to shoot him. And uh, Judge Dredge is like, wait. Wait. And, and Lex is like, <laughs> he goes oh, up. And then he starts monologuing. He monologues. <laughs> yeah, and, he's and, like, and, wait, for what? For you to die? die? For you to be weak? <laughs> for you to do this? And he's yeah. like, no, for her to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like like, the, like Lex is ba- basically like like saying like the great Judge Dredd, his final words are just wait. Yeah. And, and then like he gets shot by the rookie mm-hmm. um, who came up behind him and he was like, Nah, just wait for her to shoot you. It's such a great moment. <laughs> My second favorite moment, I think, might be um, the psychic battle between yeah. Anderson and uh, what, the Woods. Hostage. Uh, yeah, Hostage Guy's character. I don't remember his name. Yeah, the actor's weird. name is Wood, right? Something Woods. Uh, the actor's name is um, Wood Harris. Wood Harris. Got to him, give him credit. Cause was, I just call him Avon Barksdale. He was really, <laughs> really good in this movie, too. Uh, but that, like, mental battle they have between each other, he's like, you're in my fucked up head. My fucked up head's going to beat your fucked up head. And she's like, watch this. <laughs> and, then, like, and, then it fucking, and then it cuts to him pissing his pants and just falling over. And I was like, what the fuck did she do? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, 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 you know what's interesting about that scene in particular is, like, so, like, when he's, like, fighting her, he picks up her gun and, and like, uh, he's going to try to shoot her. Mm-hmm. And later on in the episode, in the movie, basically he he's kidnapped her. He's essentially yeah. kidnapped her, and he picks up her gun because she implanted the idea that he could use it earlier in that scene. Ooh. And the judge's guns are kind of coded to their DNA, mm-hmm. and, and if someone other than who it's coded to tries to use it, it, it self destructs. And so, like she she specifically did that because she knew like if at some point he tries to like take my weapon and use it against me i want him to use my weapon and have it backfire Whoa, on him i never thought about that that's yeah. great man yeah, that's so, clever so that seed was planted in, in that little like uh, thing. nice and ed harris or, or uh, wood harris keeps uh dreaming about like having like rough sexual encounters with yeah, her just to like yeah. fuck with her and she does she's not having yeah, any of it she's like okay yeah i can play this game too motherfucker yeah. here's <laughs> lena haney biting your dick off like it's <laughs> <just> terrifying <laughs> 
Uh, and, are you guys? And, and Lena Haiti, originally the mama character was supposed to be for a much older woman. And when she came in, uh, she was like, can you just make her like a man hating, like, you know, mm. drugged out. I thought she was great. Pussy she was amazing. Yeah. I, I can't picture anybody else in that role. In fact, when she, when she She's gets killed cool. in the end, and she, she, that's, oh, that's my favorite scene in the movie. That, is so, it, oh, when, I was going to ask you. So go when, ahead. Yeah. When, when Judge Dredd just throws her off the top of the fucking thing. Yeah. Just, How do you plea? And she goes, <laughs> and she just sucks the slow-mo <laughs> in and she's like. Defense noted. That is <laughs> fucking great, dude. I love it. And then the whole scene where they like show her from the glass floor bottom. Mm -hmm. and oh, and you can see her face split open. Yeah. 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 I like literally watch. She's like, do I close my eyes? Do I close my eyes? Do I no? No. 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 Pretty Dunk good. And splat. Yeah. So, Ooh, so, so that's you, gnarly. You, you know the techie mm -hmm. guy that she uses to help, kind of like yeah, Dom Dom Domho Gleason. Dom Hall Dom Hall Gleason. Is yeah. that the redhead? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, well, no, he's he's the blonde guy. Who, he's, he's a redhead, bro. Okay. <laughs> redhead. But but he's um he's uh what's his name uh. The other Gleason the, son, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, the yeah guy from, from Braveheart. Die, Braveheart yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, he's that's General Hux from the Star Wars shitty movies. Yeah, I, I don't. We don't. What a poor, <laughs> what a poor decision that <laughs> was. No, no idea what you're Brendan about. Gleason. Brendan yes. Gleason is there the actor. Go. So like, that's his son, and uh, yeah, so like he's like the the techie guy who Mama tortures, and like mm -hmm. she like carved his eyes out, so like he had to like have like he's eye like implants and stuff eyes like or whatever. That. Yeah. yeah. And he was actually the, uh, the main character in um, the directorial debut of uh, the, the writer of this movie. Uh, it was uh, Ex, Ex Machina. Machina. Yeah, Ex Machina. he's he's yeah. one of the yeah. It's him and Oscar Isaac in Ex yeah. Machina, okay. and he's from this movie, which has a connection with the writer or yeah. the director. Yeah, the, the writer. So we got my favorite moments. We got Vader's favorite moments. Jude, do you have a favorite moment oh, for this? I movie? really liked that psychic battle too. Mm. Like everything that you guys keep saying, I'm like, yeah, it was good too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I loved um, the scene where um, Dred's out of ammo and he's like, this guy, shit, yeah. this guy, shit, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the other guy's like, oh, I'd be, uh, I'd be pissing, I'd be my, pissing pants. my pants if I didn't know you just ran out of ammo. Yeah. Great moment. Great. Yeah. Cool. Right on. Yeah. And like that, that scene, like that one moment where you've seen Lena Hetty die and it, the effect of it is in slow motion. Yeah. She's being smashed into the ground. I don't like even you're know like if I can. Looking, it's, it's, it's gross and I loved it. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. I'm, I'm not, not even sure if I can show that on YouTube, but I'm editing this episode. I'm going to be like, I want to show it, but I might have to blur it out. Listen, man, um, <laughs> this is a little dark, but I, in my job, in my real world job, um, I've seen people that have jumped off the top of buildings and I've seen them hit the ground and, um, this shit's pretty fucking real. Mm. It's it's it, accurate. It, huh? it gives me some uh, little minor PTSD flashbacks from the very first one I ever watched. Whoa! And it's 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 weird. And and I don't mean to say that as a that's not a good thing, but it's very realistic. Except they didn't get the bounce off the ground quite right. <laughs> Jesus um, Christ! Yeah, it's fucking crazy. And that, and that's why when I say I was watching Lena Headey's character early, yeah, Lena, yeah. You know, I'm like, do I close my eyes? Do I don't? Do I close my eyes? Do I don't? Because I was immediately flashing back to my first jumper mm. at, at my work. That's and, wild. And, yeah. Dude. It's just like, oof. That's crazy. It's pretty sick. And yeah, for sure. So, yeah. So, Kadish, do you have a, a favorite moment or a handful of favorite moments for this movie? I do. The, the moment that stands out most to me is after Dread kind of like gets on the, the speaker system of the, the mega structure. They know where he is because he stays on long, long enough to basically have them pinpoint his position. So Mama sends some of her soldiers down there to take him out. And it was actually like a bait thing mm -hmm. where like he wanted more of her soldiers to show up. And, and he's on like the other side of, of the level. And uh, he switches his gun to incendiary mode. Yeah. And, he, like, and he like fires these like flares and you just see it go like across the, the expanse mm -hmm. of, of like the, the me mega structures, like central area. And they hit and they just catch everything on fire and, and the so and the bad guys all like burn up and uh and you can see like the flames in judge dread's like visor as he watches all these people uh that die basically that, flames yes on the side <laughs> of his head um and it's it's just such a such a brutal and beautiful and iconic uh scene where where he, he's like okay like i'm passing judgment on all these motherfuckers and i don't care like how horrible it is they die their sentence is death and yeah. i'm going to to met, met it out that's awesome are you guys ready to rate it yeah okay i'm gonna go first okay this is 
a five star movie for wow. me. Wow. One hundred percent. I have no salt on the margarita for this one. <laughs> I, I have no complaints whatsoever. This movie is pitch perfect from start to finish, and I could watch it a million times and not get tired of it. Five out five out of five. Okay. Easily five out of five. V, how about you? Not a five star, but it's close. Um four and a half. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go four and a half. I I, I don't feel the the, the the connection to it that I need to have with the movie to make it a five star movie. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does sure. It, does it? Mm-hmm. Um, but man, it's it's up there. This is a this is a really good piece of movie making, and um, it captures this world. It captures the character. It it just and, and the only reason I'm not giving it an extra half star is just because of a, a some kind of gut reaction but man it's it's right there like it's i'm right there i'm mad that and this movie doesn't have another this, one after this, it. this movie should have had three or four sequels by now yeah i'm really pissed off that it hasn't had one and yeah i mean this 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 really this should be carl urban's um it should be his it, superman it, it, sh- it should be his superman this should be his um his james bond his yeah. thing and his, his rambo and it's and yeah. it's not and it pisses me off his that Punisher. It because it should be absolutely dig yeah. it Four and a half. Okay. Jude? Um, so I don't love it as much as you guys do. You um, gave the first one a one. <laughs> <laughs> and I stand by it. Um, I, I did like it, but I think I liked it so much compared to the other one. And mm. I hated the other one. Mm-hmm. Um, so that made it stand higher. So you rate things in like genres. Mm-hmm. This is a comic book movie. Yeah. So for me, I don't have any um, backstory on it. I've never read anything that it's based on. But also, it didn't make me want to. Mm. So uh, I'm not going to run out and go get some... Um, shit, what are we watching? Judge Dredd uh, comic books. I'm also... I haven't Googled anything to get more backstory. It didn't make me want more information it was just a one and done movie for me that i was fine with um you're probably right it probably should have had some sequels but i don't think that i would have been running out to watch them i think it was just good okay it wasn't so fucking good but it was (laughs) it was good yeah uh but for me uh i don't think that it was that crazily special it was miles above the Sylvester Stallone one. Um, but most things are. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very low bar. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just going to give it um, three laws. No, no how dare you? Three law. Don't say law. No, that's, law. A, that's the other shitty movie. Okay, look, I'll give it three laws. There you go. Three laws. <laughs> I am the law. Three laws. Mama, mama's not the law. <laughs> I am the law. It's a fucking great movie. All right, Kadish, good rating. Um, so I, I do tend to think that Alex Garland is uh, quite the pretentious writer and director. I haven't liked any of the movies that he's directed, um, but I do feel like this movie, because he had other influences going on with it, uh, works. Um, it's a very small movie, um, considering like its subject matter. Uh, it's like a day in the life of a judge in this mega city world. Um, so I can appreciate like the different tact it took and, uh, the, the movie upon, you know, further watching, it does get better the more you see it. Um, it's not a guilty pleasure like the Stallone movie is. It's a genuinely good movie. Uh, I'm going to give it, uh, four scowls out of five. Okay. okay. So, uh, it's, it's, it's a movie like I never like feel the need to watch it, but when I do watch it, I'm like, oh, that was good. I, I purchased this movie this week. Like I, I, I never. Well, this not? was also a first watch for me. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. um, so just Amazon has this one and the Stallone one both for five dollars. Yeah, four ninety nine to purchase. You know, three ninety nine to rent or four ninety nine to buy. So. I didn't buy the Stallone one. <laughs> I did. I bought it both. I bought it both. Uh, but speaking of like that day in the life of the judge, like at the very very end of this movie when the um, the boss judge came up to him and he's like, "What happened to you today? You look like you went through hell." Drug bust. <laughs> <laughs> like, just She's like, you look like shit. 
perps were not cooperative. <laughs> like, it was just like a normal so fucking good. day for him. Yeah, so yeah. and then he took a bullet to the gut. Yeah. That went, like, right through him. And then, like, he, at the end, he just gets on his motorcycle and goes back to yeah, work. Yeah, just go back to work. It's like basic field dressing. <laughs> <laughs> Fixing it up. Um, Cauterize it with a hot knife. Fucking awesome, dude. I yeah. love this movie. I could watch it endlessly. It's, oh, yeah. it's such a great movie. I'm so uh, mad there's not more. I, you know, I really am angry I, if they have not made more of these movies. I, I agree with you, but... There's a side of me that says they'd fuck it up if they did. No, I don't think so. I don't think Carl Urban would let him do that. I hope not. I hope not. I just, uh, I just want it to happen. I want well, I want a couple more. So, so one of the issues here is like there are a lot of rights issues and they've yeah. been trying to get a like original series with like either Netflix or some streaming service going called Mega City One. And it's cool. not ju- it's not just a Judge Dredd show. It's like Dredd's a, a character, yeah. but it shows like the full width and scopes of certain stories within Mega City One. I'd be okay with that. So mm-hmm. they could, what was that Altered Carbon? Yeah. Mm. They you know if they can do Altered Carbon and make season one was phenomenal. They could do a Judge Dredd show. I can you, see that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm in. Yeah. Who has the rights? I don't know. Is it Paramount or Universal? Do you know who owns it? Whoever, whoever has it needs to get their shit together. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think there, there, there's some dispute over like who has the right to do what. And mm. that's one of the reasons why it's like been kind of languishing. God damn it, guys. Come on, play ball. Yeah. It's good, good. <laughs> like th- this let's, movie. Let's was, all be team players. This we, movie was shot entirely in South Africa. And it yeah. was like a South Af- African financing um, consortium that like uh, put up the money for it. Oh. oh. So I don't know if if like they have certain rights or like if the production company has certain rights. It's mm. it's weird. It's wild. Like, can we do it before Urban is seventy years old? Yeah, please. You yeah, cunts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we cunts. All yeah. right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. It's one of my favorite movies. I really had a great time talking with you guys about it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, comment below. Uh, did you? Is this a five star movie? What, what would you rate it? Did you love Carl Urban in it? Do you want to see more? Do you think it's just a one off? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, v, where can they find you on the socials? Um, you can find me. At, uh, <laughs> Keep it up. You can find me at uh, Matt Vader seventy four on all the uh, socials that matter than the people use, which is you know just Twitter, basically. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you, Jude. You can find me at I am Jude Jude Jude. You cunts. <laughs> Dirty cunts. Yeah. Gaydish. <laughs> You can find me at Matthew Kadish, K A D I S H on Twitter. I am a blue check mark. <laughs> That's <was> awful. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. <laughs> Don't forget, when it comes to pop culture, we are the law. <laughs> we are the law. Stay salty, you cunts. <laughs> <laughs>